Hi everyone, Electro here. Um, as you can see, I received quite a few bobbins in the mail. All of these are from um, Fire Pinto. He's he's made these, and some of these are unbelievable, especially these. Like they've got adjustable bits in them. You can vary the the amount the U call will push into this part, so you can uh, vary the gap or achieve a gap or not, or whatever you please and do it accurately and reproducibly because like I said everything is screw um, adjusted and these things they're, they're just unreal what he what he's making with his 3D printer they, they fit well everything and the, the degree of flexibility he's got like he's even printed me ones for experimental use um, um, that he's printed the round bobbin as well with his own design slip in which is like a separate slip-in. It's um, I got Nate to do a different design to what Russ did. It's it's sort of similar, but it's different because of the bit down here. Now, again, I'll be able to use that with um, with some of my other designs. Uh, one other thing too, I want to show you guys with this. Oops. Uh, these pins. Now I've got a. Um, tapering drill bit and these are drilled like a Morse taper and that's it there and it's the same taper on the, on the drill bit uh, what I can do with these is because it, you can easily pull them out with your fingers but they are quite firm when, once you push them in you can rewind the, the bobbin if, however many times you want and then just pull these out put the wires in there and push them back in and that'll connect to the stainless wire pretty well and then you've got clips on here for alligator clips for your connections so and if you want to rewind the bobbin or do whatever you can just pull these out now once you've finished you can of course uh, put the permanent ones in but for experimental use they're, they're not bad and they're quite easy to, to install and the good thing is when you want the permanent ones you just pull these ones out and re-drill oh sorry uh, just tap the hole and put the permanent ones in now. So so far so good. This is the one I got from Ross. This is the um, the turned Durlin. Uh, you can see there I'm mucking around with the um, with the slip in on that one as well. Just again changing the designs, doing a few different things. And uh, that's one I've already wound. Uh, I haven't got a core in at the moment, but I've got to make the base so I can screw it down so I don't break the cores or like that when I'm taking these things apart. But um, yeah, that's where I am so far with that. And um, this is what I've also been doing. Now, this is my, it's going to be my gas processor. Now, a while ago, I mentioned to you guys I got a ozone generator. And it was an old one, but I got it specifically for these tubes because they're inert gas tubes they've got a metal rod in the centre of them and that's the connector for it there and they're surrounded by um, by inert gas in the tube now interestingly enough you can see there the connector it's mercury I think because they glued these together they, they, they didn't use heat so, because the top is separate to the rod, uh, one way to maintain the connection after they've been glued together to hold the, the gas, mercury will, will, will do that. Now, I'm not sure if that's the reason, but on some of the tubes you can see little bits of mercury up and down the tube. Now, that's sealed, so I don't think... Um, I don't know what sort of gas is in these. It's it's got um, a couple of different numbers printed there, and I, I I looked it up from the manufacturer, but it didn't. Um, I need to do a bit more research on that. Now, how that goes is it, it they fit into the, into that all the way down.
and there's an equal space around them. Now, the glass will prevent any sort of arcs to the positive because that's connected way down here on the outside and the rest of it is up there. So it actually ionises quite well. It makes a, a hissing, buzzing sound when it works, sort of like a, when you're standing under a power line, that sort of sound. And um, I took some pictures of it before. That's, that's just on my screen. From the side. Straight on. Also, the uh, power supply I've got for this, it's variable. It's connected up to a 5,000 volt 20 milliamp transformer, but it's got a variable um, pot on it, and you can vary the intensity of it. This is about uh, half, a bit over half, about two thirds of the way up. I didn't uh, take a picture of it. But there's not that much difference really between this and full on. Um, when it's all the way down you can see that it's less but either way I can vary it. Now the next step to this is um, LEDs and there's a bit of a story with that. I've got a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend who's quite good at getting some um, hard to get bits whatever they are electronics and all that sort of stuff and he says he can get me um, red LEDs with 730 to 780 or a range in there. I don't know how many um, ranges he's got, but they're quite high because the ones you normally buy are 630 to 680 maximum. Uh, I couldn't find any above that, but um, well, if I get them, I'll... I'll, I'll try them with this. They they are expensive apparently, but um, I'll see what I can do about getting a few um, demos or samples or something like that. So maybe I'll, I'll try them out now. With that, that, there's the inlet holes. I've got four of them drilled there. And what I'm going to do down this end of it here is have the electron extraction circuit and grid. Um, I still haven't made that, I haven't even thought about it really, I've just left space for it. Um, all it is is the mesh and I can have the um, the electrical components external from that for the time being and from there it'll go straight to the intake of the engine. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep this section here um, as short as I can and that's why I haven't made it yet really because I've got to make that part on the engine uh, which I just purchased a new one the other day. Actually I bought a um, 4 horsepower Briggs & Stratton generator which is 240 volt. It works great and the water injection plugs which I made they fit. They actually fit the motor. So um, great because this thread here like I said was um, copied from a Briggs & Stratton spark plug. So I've now got a motor well, I had one before, but it was 10 horsepower and it was a bit hard to pull start all the time. Whereas the the new one's only 4 horsepower and that's easy to start, so because I'm getting old, you see. So, anyway, that's where I am at the moment. I'll keep you guys posted with the rest. Bye for now.